So we've now moved into the third eye chakra or the Agnya chakra, right, between the brows in Kundalini Chrism Yoga. So this is an update of where we're at in terms of the great mother's energy right now on earth. She moves from the root chakra all the way to the crown as we go from solstice to solstice, right? So we're approaching the solstice and the energy has now moved into the third eye. And Agnya chakra means command, knowledge, or wisdom. So it's when the eye of knowledge opens and we see the reality of the self. Right. So when we're in the lower chakras earlier this year, as we've been moving from the root all the way up the system, we are the, our state of consciousness or consciousness itself is in a place of unconsciousness. So we are just inside our patterns. We're in a certain behavior. We're in a kind of emotional sort of reactivity or state of being. And we haven't had awareness about it yet. We're just kind of observing it. And kind of watching it play out in our lives. And as it's moved up the system, now that it's reached this point, we have an awareness of the reality of the self. It's the bridge between, um, it's the bridge into divine consciousness as we move from the throat into Agnya or third eye chakra. It's also known as the Guru chakra or the inner master. And this is the place of where the, the yogis say, this is where we receive viveka. Viveka means discrimination. And bhakti, devotion. So viveka is like, I'm seeing this in my life. I have now had an understanding from earlier this year, I saw myself in certain patterns and I didn't have an understanding of how I was playing out in those patterns. I was externalizing my own um, ego was externalizing the pattern, right? Because it wanted to hold on to this, this, this thing I was doing. But now that we've moved into the third eye, the, the, we, are, we are in a place that's outside of the elements. We've moved, so the last chakra here, ether, the throat, we move through all the elements into ether. And as we move into the third eye, we're beyond the elements. We're now in consciousness. We're in the place of Shiva the beholder. So it's the place of sat, which means truth, chit, which means um, consciousness, and ananda, bliss. So it's the pure awareness of what is. It's the place of the atma. So there's the saying that we are all the atma or the Buddha or the Christ pretending not to be, meaning each one of us is animated and our true self is the supreme self. That's who each of us are, right? We are all the Atma, meaning the Christ. We are all this, this Satchit Ananda, this pure being. And it's our, it's the stories of our lives and these patterns and these loops and these karmic bonds we get into that make us forget that we are actually the Atma itself. We are all, we are all that. We are all the I am. Right, So when we come into this third eye space, we now have awareness over what we didn't see before. I now see clearly, very clearly, I have self-awareness over my part and how I was not in a state of forgiveness or love or in the pure being of self, the pure being of the Atman, right? In a certain part of my life, a certain place of my life. So we're all having a realization on the true reality of the self. And it's where we use, as I said, Vivica or discrimination to go, okay, I'm going to be honest with myself because I'm devoted to bhakti. I allow my third eye to see how I've been behaving in my life, the patterns and the loops I've been going through, where I am lo lost in an egoic um attachment and I am choosing I am choosing the path of what was the word here oh here they say vairagya vairagya is required at the third eye vairagya is uh, renunciation okay we don't have to renunciate all of everything all at once right life doesn't work like that it works in rhythms and cycles and we can renunciate something right now it, maybe it's a behavior Maybe it's a way of being. Maybe it's a way of perceiving. 
Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a, it's a, ble a depleting state of being in some way. Because renunciation needs to happen in order. It's a prerequisite for true knowledge. So right here, this is where Shiva Shakti meet. Okay, so we're at we're beyond the elements, and it's a it's a the chakra looks like a, a dual a two petaled lotus, right? Because it's where Shiva consciousness and Shakti nature, so Purusha and Prakriti meet over here. So it's where consciousness and nature are beautifully blended. They still haven't moved into the crown yet, so it's another distillation point. But it's where there's a balance of our consciousness with our nature. Our consciousness has come to marry our nature and go, I, I am the higher self here. I am the Atman. I am the supreme being. And I see myself. I see my own mask, my ego, my depleting pattern here. And it comes in to merge with Shakti to elevate the nature of the self, to integrate something right? To release something and go, I'm going to follow my vivika, my discrimination of my, myself and my bhakti, my devotion. I, I can move through this because I understand my spiritual principles and precepts. My ego will want me to stay in a place of confusion and not have full realization of myself. It's about the self. I see myself here. It's an honest moment of self introspection and understanding of how one is behaving in the world and where one needs to um, purify. So the third eye is related to Shiva and they say when Shiva's third eye opens, whatever his gaze falls upon, it burns. He, his gaze is burning up a destructive pattern or behavior in the self. And it's a, it's a place where we allow it to have it happen. And we trust that the renunciation of that pattern or letting it go or, or moving into a place of going, no, no, I'm not coping with life in this way anymore. I'm going to let it go, even though it's the thing I know and my ego has chosen to do out of survival and it's what I'm used to. It doesn't actually fill me. I feel empty. It doesn't actually replenish my being. So I'm going to let it go. I don't know what lies beyond it because this, this is also associated with emptiness, right? Emptiness. So we have to empty the self in order to gain true knowledge. We have to let go of a behavior and say, I'm actually going to start approaching life in this way because I know my spiritual precepts. Because any spiritual precept is that we live a life of what have we not forgiven? What are we unable to love? Can I love it all? You know, so this is also the place where, like I said, Shiva Shakti meets. So this thing of light and dark, masculine, feminine, lazy, industrious, cold and hot. Um, that polarized state of being merges because, because light is only the absence of dark and dark is only the absence of light. And industrious behavior is the absence of laziness and laziness is the absence of industriousness. Right, So there's this kind of blending or balancing out that happens over here where we perceive almost like the Tao, right? We have this perception where that um, supreme, the, the, the perception of supreme consciousness, which is all of it is God consciousness. Everything is animated by the supreme being. And I don't have to polarize anything. I come into this blended, balanced place and I witness, I witness myself and my own behavior and I witness life. And there's a great emptiness and spaciousness now at the third eye. We're given that uh, energetically. This is where the great mother's energy is right now. So we're given the opportunity to see ourselves and life through this lens of spaciousness, that it's all God in animation, the dark, the light and everything in between. And that spaciousness of accepting that about the world and accepting that about ourselves actually empowers us to let go of patterns. Because, because it gives us the spaciousness, that, that, that acceptance and that ability to love all of it allows us to release something. So the other thing I want to say is this Agnya Chakra is represented by the Shivling, right? The, Shiv, the Shiva Lingam. It's a, a, it's a phallus in the yoni. And it's a milky white color. 
And it's also so, so, so associated with the Muladhara chakra, the root chakra, uh, which is also represented by the Shivlingam, right? But that, that lingam is black. So some, and the, the root chakra, so there's a, a connection between root. This is also the place of um, creation, right? It's the beginning and the end, the end and the beginning. There's a connection between Agnya and Muladhara. So where the lingam was in, uh, is, is black in Muladhara chakra, meaning we, our state of consciousness was unconscious. And as it's moved up the system, from January after last solstice, as we're moving up now toward this solstice, it's coming, it's gone through purification. We've understood something about ourselves and it's moved into a milky white lingam. So we're still, it's still, it's had a lot of purification, um, but it still has to move into crown, right? So this is another point where we might choose to deny being honest with ourselves, right? When something appears as plain as day, this is what you're doing in life. This is why it's affecting you. Now, the, the wisdom will open up an avenue for you to cope with that. This is where you can go to deal with that. This is how you can start. This is what you can do to help with that. The wisdom always helps us to um, move into our bhakti, our devotion of a higher way of being, a more integrated way of being. Um, and the connection between this third eye and the root is also like, you know, everything comes from old wounds in the root or childhood wounds. We're, we're hardwired from the age zero to seven in terms of the patterns and the ways we approach life, right? So it's just widen us from our family systems and any dysfunctions we had growing up. So that all comes from the root. And it's moved up and we've had a realization about a certain aspect of ourselves. And um, yeah, the light's been switched on. It's moved from unconscious into conscious. So the switch has been flicked on and we see. We see. Um, yeah, so let me see if there's anything else I wanted to share. Yeah, I've spoken about Shiva Shakti merging. So the Ida and the Pingala, there's two um, energy lines. Ida is moon, Pingala is sun, and it moves up the Shashumna, the central channel, the spine. So it's almost like the caduceus going up the staff. So Ida and Pingala merge here um, into this non-dual realization, seeing the self. Yeah, so I think I'll leave it at that. Um... I'll just read you this great, this great bhajan from Sri Shankar, Shankaracharya. Uh, this is part of the bhajan. I am Shiva, the liberated Atma, the divine and the supreme. I am the Atma, Satchit Ananda and immortal. The Atma is the, the supreme self of the entire universe. It is the Atma of all living beings and this Atma am I. Sending love.